given the poor tolerance of elderly patients to intensive chemotherapy, investigators evaluated the safety and efficacy of low-intensity chemo plus inotuzumab, and it is being studied as frontline therapy for older patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And to talk about this study, I am with Nicholas Short, who is an MD, a hematology oncology fellow at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center, soon to be an assistant prof. Uh, now, the FDA granted a priority review designation to this particular anti-CD22 antibody drug conjugate. Uh, and it's for the treatment of patients with relapsed or refractory acute ALL. Let's talk about the agent being studied first. Why this kind of combo between this, these two agents? So, well, first, so inotuzumab ozogamycin is an anti-CD22 uh, antibody toxin conjugate. So CD22 is almost ubiquitously expressed on B-cell ALL. In, in only a very small percentage of patients do they not express CD22, so it's an attractive uh, target for ALL therapy. And so this particular agent is an antibody targeting CD22 added, uh, linked to a toxin to sort of to directly target the um, lymphoblasts in an attempt to hopefully decrease the toxicity to other cells as well. So that's the ozogamycin? The ozogamycin is the toxin component, yes. Okay. So the FDA decision for priority review was based on the phase three Innovate trial. What did that trial find essentially? So the Innovate trial was a randomized phase three trial of inotizumab ozogamycin versus uh, combination cytotoxic chemotherapy for patients with relapsed or, or refractory uh, B-cell ALL. And the, the, the essential findings of that are that inotizumab ozogamycin was associated with an increase, a significantly increased overall response rate, uh, as well as an, uh, an increase in overall survival compared to cytotoxic chemotherapy. So we felt that that was promising enough to evaluate that in other settings. So what did you look at for what you're presenting here at ASCO? Yes. So, so uh, I'll be presenting um, our results of a phase one, two study of inotizumab ozogamycin plus low intensity chemotherapy for the frontline management of older patients with uh, AL, Philadelphia chromosome negative ALL. And so these were what, 60 years old or older? Yes, yeah, so all these patients were older, 60 years or older, and this is a particularly difficult uh, population to treat with right. ALL because we do know that when treated with full intensity chemotherapy, they have a relatively unacceptable um, early mortality uh, from induction and from myelosuppression related infections. So their, their long-term survival um, is often quoted as somewhere around 20 to 40 percent, and largely because of the toxicity of the regimen. So what are you finding? So, so far we've treated 52 patients with this combination in the frontline setting. Um, we found uh, excellent um, response rates, so 98% of patients have responded. There was only one patient who didn't respond. Um, so, and this, is, and this was driven in part by a relatively high uh, rate of minimal residual disease negativity, which we know is a good surrogate for long-term outcomes. So after one cycle of therapy, 78% of patients were MRD negative by standard six color flow cytometry. And so this, this ended up translating to uh, what we feel is a very promising uh, three-year overall sur survival rate of 56% in these patients who historically had quite poor outcomes. Yeah, I mean, you, you had a significantly higher three-year overall survival, 54 versus 30% I think it was, P equals 0 0.007. I mean, that's a, that's a nice number. Yes, so acknowledging, the, uh, acknowledging that this is not a randomized study, right. of course, but we did compare to our historical uh, data at our institution at MD Anderson with patients who are 60 years or older who would otherwise fit these inclusion criteria for this trial, who were treated with full intensity hyper-CVAD without the inotuzumab and the full intensity chemotherapy as opposed to the low intensity, uh, reduced intensity chemotherapy that we gave in this study. And what we found was a significantly improved overall survival rate with this combination of inotuzumab plus low intensity chemotherapy compared to our historical data with hyper CVAD alone. The lack of minimal residual disease, that's becoming pretty important, isn't it? I mean, that, that seems to be a, a target that might be used in, in trials going forward because it has become a pretty important marker for, let's say, a positive outcome. Yes, and, and so, and so Obviously, we have the survival data, which is very helpful to reach conclusions, but we do feel like it's driven in large part by the MRD negativity rate. And we did, and we did and part of the rationale for using inotuzumab in the frontline setting was because we saw much higher minimal residual disease negativity rates in the relapsed er, re refractory setting compared to chemotherapy. And it does appear, again, in the absence of a randomized data, that the, the MRD 
negativity rates we're getting with this combination are higher than are standard, standardly seen potentially with just cytotoxic chemotherapy alone, especially in this older population right. who often have other, other factors that may make their disease more resistant to therapies. So in terms of what's next? So we're, this trial is still accruing, first of all. So we're still, we're still uh, accruing patients and analyzing the, the data. Um, a few things, I think that this was a sort of a proof of concept. First of all, of using this low-intensity chemotherapy backbone. So we're looking into using this backbone with other novel agents. So for example, with blenitumumab, especially, which is a very promise, promising uh, anti-CD3, CD19 by specific T-cell engager. So that's been studied in the refract relapsed refractory setting, but we'd like to move that into the frontline setting based on the promising data of using basically novel agents in combination with low-intensity chemotherapy. And we do want to continue to work with the dosing of the inotuzumab. So one particular you know, adverse event that we do see with inotuzumab-based um, regimens is venoclusive disease, or VOD. Mm -hmm. And there is some evidence that uh, patients may tolerate better weekly dosing of inotuzumab versus monthly dosing. So we're talking about whether or not um, you know, the, the dosing structure of the inotuzumab can be altered in future trials. So it's exciting. It is very exciting, yes. That's always nice to hear. There's been a lot of uh, news out of this particular meeting in the field of hematology, so please check out our coverage online as well as in print for Ash Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.